do drugs and drinking and you know, it all comes to that and all the partying, all the money spent, all the bitches have gone home, all the all the dudes, whatever, I don't fucking know what you bitches say, but whatever. When all of it's said and done, you know, you're either gonna hit rock bottom, you're gonna be dead, you're gonna be homeless, or you're gonna be in jail. Or some of you, the few of you, they say every one in ten will succeed. So why don't we break the statistic today? People get a higher power. I cannot say that enough. Don't it doesn't matter what it is, to each their own, you know, I choke through different folks. For me it's Christianity, that's what I believe, Jesus Christ. So everybody do their own thing, you know? But if you want to believe in Jesus Christ, yo, he's a loving God, you know, and he takes people for who they are, you know, that's that. But I'm just saying, you gotta get straight, you gotta get right, you know what you're doing is wrong, you know who I'm talking to, you know who you are, fam. Deal with it, get right, and get back with it. Uh-huh, let's go. Here with Roscoe, okay? I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how drugs and alcohol affect you in different ways, what it'll do, leading down different pathways, you know, what it can stomp out in your in your in your uh, your spirit, you know, what it can take from you, what it can take from your future, what it robs you of, you know. And I wanna start this off by you know all those things you just saw my boy Terry trying to do those bloopers that's what drugs do to you kids okay okay so remember those bloopers of Terry this is Terry from Terry talk and he's saying welcome to all the viewers from TikTok and YouTube welcome and join us today we're going to talk about a serious topic and it's going to be about drugs and alcohol mind you while I talk to you we are from Canada legalized marijuana so we are going to smoke while we talk because you know this can be a gateway drug is it is it not i don't know but we're going to cover that today on this topic so here we go let me just spark this up terry why don't you introduce yourself to the viewers man hey there viewers this is T tiktok terry from tiktok i'm going to do the same thing but i'm not going to terry my lighter's fucking out give me a lighter man perfect perfect see we have complications but we just roll with it baby okay we get there we get there Oh, she's supping now. Okay, that's the way I like it. You know what I'm saying? A little spicy, a little caliente. There you go, Terry. Doesn't thank the you, my brother. Thank doesn't you, thank you. Doesn't the lighter work? It worked. No, that was broken, man. That's why I chucked it up like that, Terry. Come on, stay out. That's kids. Drugs. Drugs. It's not what We love Terry, though. We love Terry. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. What to expect when you do drugs? The hardships, the trials, the tribulations that drugs will take you through. This is my story. This is a little bit of what I've gone through. This is my views. This is what I see. This is just a small fragment. This is just merely a small smidge on the spectrum of what we could be talking about. It's a huge topic that's undermined and not talked about enough in these days. The whole schools, with the, with the public schools, they got it all wrong how they deliver the message on drugs. Because look, I do, I, I, I do marijuana. That is a drug. I don't know how you do marijuana. I smoke marijuana. Okay, let's get real people. But I've done drugs. Okay, I saw the meth in the health class video. I smoked meth. Harry, what have what you noticed throughout your years of wisdom and wiseness on this planet? What what have you noticed drugs to be? If right. you had been a Woodstock, brother. They're very bad. Yo, yo, yo. So I just want to give a big shout out. This thing, this segment, you know. I just want to give a big shout out to my boy Luke. You know, he's always been a supporter of me along with my parents, obviously. You know, well, not obviously. Some parents don't, but my dad, you know. God bless him. Love him. But, uh, yo, I got my boy Claude here to give me the time to speak about my life, you know, get from it on tape, you know, for the first time, so I appreciate that. God bless him, God bless his channel, God bless all the viewers on his channel, you know, the subscribers, all of you guys. We thank you so much, one love, much love, you know, it's all beautiful, baby, you know. And uh, I want to thank Marco, you know, he's always kept me good, bro, when I was down, yo, you know, he always had my back, he always came to check me, bro, he was always about it, you know. He always helped me out whenever I needed something, the guy was... He never had a, had a harsh hand, you know? So God was very giving, you know? So bless him, and God bless him and his kids, you know? And uh, we just want to thank, uh, you know, just my brother and my sister, you know? They didn't dash me off the side. You know, my sister's very supportive. God bless my nephews. May they grow up, be smarter than their uncle, you know? Love God, live long and prosper. All you guys, make babies, prosper, you know? Do your thing, you know? Don't, like, don't worry about what the government's saying, bro. Have big family. Be like old school shit, you know what I'm saying? I have like, like five, six kids, you know what I'm saying? They've been big families. They want to breed all them on like fucking big Indian families come over here. No, I'm going to breed some big white, black families, Mexican families. I don't give a shit, bro. We need to breed, dog. Get your family big. Because when you're gone, all you got left is your family that you leave behind to keep the family going. Oh, my man. 
What up? They say you can only be dope sick if it's like a physical addiction. I don't believe that. I'm not a strong believer in that. I don't, I, I don't, I don't condone that when people say that because I myself have been on drugs. Now, I was mentally addicted to, maybe not physically, you know what I'm saying, but mentally. And that shit made me feel sick. And what I mean by sick is like, okay, let me, write, let me paint you a picture here and then you won't get what I'm saying. I mean, so I, I start day one, grab my crack. I grab like a ball, 3.5, $350 worth for you who don't know weights like that. So about 350 bucks worth of crack. I smoke that, it's gone in about two, three hours because it's the start of the night, you know, it, it lasts because I'm sober right now, I'm starting off. Cool. Now that ball runs out, it's 3 o'clock, it's 2.30 a.m., whatever. I need to call the guy for next one. He don't come because you got the money. He don't mind, you know. It's whatever, it's business is business. Some motherfucker comes. He comes, drops me off the next half ball, okay, half ball, that's a 1.7, just for you who don't know, that's a one set. that's 175 bucks a day. Smoke that in about an hour. Okay, so now you gotta see where we're at. Start with 3.5, now that's 4, but 4. Point, now we have 4.2. Okay, we have 4.2 grams of drugs in your body. That's a lot of drugs. Then, I go on, say maybe, I cool down, smoke a bunch of weed, maybe fuck my girl. Chill out a little bit, get my heart down a little bit, say so I don't want to have a heart attack, I got a hole in my heart from birth, you know what I'm saying, so I gotta be careful of that. They love me, man, I've done that in five years, but that's the physical fact that we just want to crack. You gotta think about all that damage. So, I slow it down, but I don't go to sleep, you know what I'm saying, because crack's got you up. So now it's like 8 o'clock the next day, but you haven't sleep yet. And remember, it's just 3 o'clock, so now we're at 8 o'clock. Okay, so we've been partying, we've been jamming, we've been doing whatever the fuck you've been doing, but it ain't productive. It ain't what happened for Jesus, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, we just, we deal with it. But now it's 8 o'clock in the morning. Now you're like, my body is about to go to sleep. And if it goes to sleep, I know it's going to be sick. So I need to call the next guy to come through. And I need to order what's called breakfast. Okay? I need to order me some breakfast. So I call the guy and say, yo, I need my breakfast order. My breakfast order is a half bone. So now I need at least another 1.7. Now we have, so we have 4.2, now we have 5.8, uh, 5 okay? No, 5.9, sorry, I apologize, my mouth is off, we have 5.9. So now we are all, we are at half of 10 grams over the limit, okay? So you're already halfway to 10 grams in your system. You're already on your way. So now think about it, that's 8 o'clock. Now the money's starting to get tight though, folks. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm not getting as much much dope. Now I'm grabbing my next time, so I run out of the 170 in my breakfast bag. Now I'm grabbing like a lunch bag, you know? That's like maybe an 80 piece, you know? For 80 bucks, maybe I'm giving a gram, you know what I'm saying? I'm not getting good. 100 bucks, I get a half ball, you know what I'm saying? But 80 bucks, you know, I'm getting that. So I get that. And then uh, maybe like I'm struggling. I try to get an e-transfer going, you know, back in the hard days. I try to go rob somebody. I try to do something, you know what I mean? But I, I try to make that money, but I say, come on, I could just pick e-transfer, you know. I don't got to put serious crime. I ain't got to worry about my freedom today. And that's the best way to get hot. Um, so I get like, I get like a $40 e-transfer. So I pull that out and I buy a photo piece. I get like a 60 piece for $40. You know? And then I smoke that. But now the money's really tight, you know. Everybody, you know, I, just, I don't want to go boosting too hot. I'm catching up too bad, I'm gonna be too noticed, so I can't make money in the community the way I want to legally. I gotta wait for nightfall. When nightfall comes, I'm gonna be too worried about getting high for the night and not be able to productively do my crime. You know what I'm saying? So, but then I start to just say, I need to cool it. I need to take a break. It's time to take some fluorizapam, some, some uh, Seroquel, and I need to slow it down. So I slow it down, you know what I'm saying? And so when I crash, I go to bed. And when I wake up, I know I ain't got no dope to go wake up with because I probably smoked it all the night before. So when I wake up that next morning off those pills, now those pills hit you hard. They mix with fentanyl, they mix with benzos, they mix with other shit. Now you've been on crack cocaine, you've been high on that vibe level. Now you just crash immediately and went to bed for eight hours and you've just been up for 24 hours. That's just a small example. I've been longer stretches than that. But when you've been down the night and I got up for so long after eight hours, you wake up and your body is so stiff. Because you ain't drinking enough water. You feel the pain. 
there's the physical people, there's the physical. I feel like I cannot survive, I cannot get out of bed if I don't get up and smoke some crack. And the only thing that I'm getting up for right now is if I'm going to get fixed. Unless I can be on this phone while I'm lying down and getting heat transfer, because I physically cannot walk around unless it's to go take a piss because my morning woods got me up. I'm lying in bed with my girl trying to get a heat transfer so I can go to the bank, grab that, and then run right to the dealers and then run home with us. I can't hit that up and be ready to go to pot all day long and scheming and wheeling and dealing to get more shit. You see what I mean? That's a fucking insane circle to be caught on. Why would you want to do that to yourself? Because you fucking insane, brother. Sisters, whatever you are, you fucking insane. You're sick. You need help. It's okay, because there's help out there. You go piss that salvage, you know what I mean? Uh, Willie Monster Detox, you know, you can go to other places, great facilities, you know, they got people to know about, uh, you know, the little world, but for you LGBT community people, it's right up your alley, you know what I'm saying? So you can go deal with that. But, uh, you know, ah, uh, yeah, God bless them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, those people are special, uh, you know, I got a couple of lesbian friends, so don't judge, you know, everybody loves them, hug, you know, a little bit of drugs, you know, that's where we all from, you know what I'm saying? God loves all people. That's it, bro. God loves everybody. Take you as you are, you know what I'm saying? Just go as long as you want to come to him, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, yeah, like, ooh, just the sickness is there, bro. Like, there's a physical pain coming off a of crack, bro. What about like, when you wake up and then the, the mental what? is on top of it, brother? Like, you can't even fucking deal with it, brother. Like, you, your mind's playing this game. It's like, oh, uh, you're just, like, you're beating up on yourself because you got so high last night. Because you have no money. You have no dope. You're living in the gutter. Every negative thought is feeding to you when you open your eyes because you're so what about the pu What about the puking in the morning and shit? Oh, you puke heavy, bro. Diarrhea. Fucking shit through the eye of a needle. Fucking your gut hurts. Fucking... Bro, you're fucking the wrong bitch because you're so high you got STIs now. Can the list go on, bro? Like, shit happens, bro. It's not just what happens stays in Vegas, happens in Vegas, baby. Shit comes home with you, brother. Sometimes what's in Vegas is living right at home. You just stuck your part in the wrong part of the town, you know what I'm saying? But, that, there's that. And then there's some mistakes you can't come back from. Like, some dudes are a little weird. They fuck each other in the ass. They get AIDS. And you're going die from that one, man. Like, it's easy. But that's that. That's the really harsh reality of it. But let's be honest. We've got to talk about this because if we don't talk about it, who's going to educate the kids? You know what I'm saying? Like, somebody's got to be willing to speak to that. There, I'm past it now, but what we're going to talk about is this. Yo, one time, I was so homeless and so hungry, and I burned every bridge in my family. Nobody wanted to give me a buck for a mouth to feed, dog. Nothing. So I still was walking this McDonald's parking lot. I seen this fucking bag. He looked a little heavy, you know? Big golden arch on it, you know what I'm saying? You know, that big one we all like to get to the drive through, you know what I'm talking about? So fucking, I roll up to it, nobody around. I look, there's a few people in the parking lot, nobody's noticing me, but somebody's probably gonna catch on what I'm about to do. So I pick the bag up, right? I look in there. Well, it's like a half-eaten burger, Big Mac right in there, bro. To me, that's like, yo, going to Red Lobster right there, dog. I, I ain't even shot in two days, three days, four days. I ain't know, bro. Slept in like seven. That was like God blessing me, bro. Something that somebody else already eat, bro. And that was my blessing for the day. Not even a fresh burger, but a half-eaten one. But that was God saying, he still got me, bro. But I'm just not living right now. Saying so, he had to show me that I was living wrong, but he wasn't gonna let me die, you know what I'm saying? But God will put you to the test to see if you will overcome, you know what I'm saying? And I did. I'm here, I'm still alive, you know. I'm healthy, I work out every day, you know. I run, I do my thing, you know. But, uh, yeah. So, appreciate what you got. Don't take it for granted. Always somebody out there also having a worse day than you. Always remember that. Like my worst day, I could be getting fired right now. Who knows? But like, the next guy over there living in Africa, he ain't even got electricity. It's sure, it's toilet. It don't even have plumbing. You gotta take that bucket and go dump it somewhere. I know when I flush my shit, it's going down the train and outside, and I don't gotta worry about it. That's a blessing right there. You know what I'm saying? We don't even take that. Bro. We take that for so much granted. I flick on a light switch, the light comes on right away. Does it take five minutes? No, it fucking comes on right away. I turn my TV on, fucking I get Netflix right away. No, I ain't bitching. Back, and you've reached the fun fact of the day. And our fun fact today is, 
if you see a horse drinking from any kind of water, it's not poisonous, people. It's not poisonous. Horses, in fact, will not drink from anything that is not okay drinkable water. That is the fact, and you can take that to the bank. I just want to give my shout out to Marenka, yo, she's a cute girl, yo, you know what I'm saying? I'm just talking to this girl right now, I met her a few days ago, but yo, we, we was at the park today, yo, we was connected, you know, we was vibing and shit. We was just chilling with the dogs, my dog got along with hers, you know? I got a two-year-old German Shepherd Rex, he's pretty cool. But yeah, she's got some Scout Morgan, you know, they're pretty dope dogs, we just chilled. You know, bro, you gotta go to BB's, bro, you gotta be consistent, you gotta work out, bro. You gotta get those endorphins flowing naturally in a way that you're getting high without using drugs. Running. Going on nature walks, going to the beach, getting in the pool, boxing, some sort of mixed martial arts, anything like that is good. Skipping, anything like that, doing some arts and crafts, things that are visual activities, things that are hands-on activities. Get a landscaping job, plant some fucking vegetables, I don't know, but just stay busy and go to meetings. And you've seen some guy hitting him in the head with a bat just because he looked at him wrong. There's another time when a guy, um, when a girl was in the subway and this bully came and he, and he had a knife, some some guy stepped in and he said, oh, you want to step in? Look what you're going to get. He stuck the knife right in him. Motherfucker. Jeez. Jeez. Done. Done ski. Cut like butter. That's not right, bro. That's some hard shit. You okay? You see some shit, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, man? Okay, you ever been, you ever had bodily inflicted harm done to you? based on like being too high or too oh, drunk? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Have you ever been too high or too drunk, bro? Have you ever uh, got yeah, fucked I'm, up? I'm gonna tell you right now. Well, about a couple of weeks ago, I drank so much beer, but I didn't eat. That was why I think I fell. So I fell inside my house, cracked my head, laying down in a pool of my own blood, went to the hospital, half drunk, half gone. They put nine staples in my head. And that's about it. Jeez. That's about it. But there's a little more to it than that. There's residual effects that will come long term probably based off of that accident. From what I've heard, I was not here personally. But that was a that was that was a heavy blow to the head, man. We're glad Terry's still here with us, the TikTokers and YouTubers. We're happy that he's still here around, man. He's got much more wisdom to can to, to bestow on us, you know, as young viewers. In such a hard time of life in this world, you know? Yeah. So, you know. Terry, have you ever been hospitalized, like mental ward or anything from doing drugs? I know no. I have, yo. I know drugs have met, met like my cheese slid right off my cracker, brother. Like I was walking, flailing, talking to myself down the street. It was a bad time, yo, but like I had to find myself again, years of rehab, treatment, you know, going and being consistent, working on myself, doing what I have to do, self-reflection, you know, and uh, change my perspective on a lot of things, which allowed me to find my, my mental gain again, you know help me grasp back onto what I lost, bro. Because I was like a nut part, bro. I was like, yo, at the Cuckoo House, bro, I was going in there like two, three times a week, son. And they called me the freaking flyer at 22 Division. I was always going in there. That was my nickname. One time I went in there to get property, take this in. And uh, I didn't, the guy was typing on the computer, the little cadet, didn't even look up from the fucking computer. I walk in, he's like, yo, it's pretty bad when I know it's you, Ross Spencer. Freaking flyer, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I said, yo, son, chill out. I'm just here to pick up property. He's like, yes, son, but there's a warrant for you. I just brought it out. I was like, what? And the man had to take me down to the basement. I just came from court. Then I had to go back across, call my lawyer quick before they put me down in the basement. I'm like, yo, bro, don't go to your car yet. Get back in the courtroom. We gotta go back across the street. And I had to go in the fucking car, up to the basement of the courthouse, get real released back on a $10,000 bail just to go to rehab and get shipped out because they didn't want me in the city, fam, because I was a bad cat, fam. I was just chilling, you know? Getting on all kinds of mischief. But that's all because of drugs, kids. That's why you shouldn't do drugs. Because it'll ruin your fucking life. Now, I can't go to I can't go to Hawaii. I can't go to the States. I can't go enjoy Black Friday. I get Canadian Black Friday, but it ain't as good. Let's be real here. Come on. Let's be real. Let's be real. A lot of crack. Did some fentanyl once or twice, you know, smoke a lot of weed, did some acid, did some shrooms, did some lean for a while, popped some perky sets, bro. Uh, I don't know what I haven't done. A little GHB, you know, when you wanna get freaky in the night with your girl. But you know what I'm saying? There's a whole ton of shit I've done that you shouldn't do. Okay, so like let's start off with the basics. Methamphetamine. Kids, you wanna get high on meth. Go to the counter, go underneath the sink, in the kitchen, under the bathroom, pull out all that shit, mix it up, you're gonna get a high on meth, okay? That's what you're putting in your body. Take it for real, son. Get real with it. 
okay? Lawn fertilizer, battery acid, uh, acetaminophen, like all kinds of shit, man. You don't want that. You don't need it. So, another good one is crack cocaine. Crack cocaine, that'll make you sell everything that you own. Make you sell the clothes off your body. Make you sell your kid if you got one. Make mm. you sell your little puppy. Your mama just got you for being sober, but you ain't sober no more because you just got back on the pipe the day you got the puppy because you got nothing left to work for. Been there, done that, son. Okay, so catch up with me now. Okay, so crack will make you sell your shit. Crack will make you sell your soul. Listen, you start doing some weird stuff, man. You're going to cross over to the other side. You don't want to be going on the other side. You got to stay right here on this side, you know? But drugs will make you cross that side and make you go places you don't want to go, you know? Things you never thought you'd do, you'd be doing. Like, you'd be robbing out your grandma's purse, stealing your mom's wedding bands, you know what I'm saying? Like, little things like that, you know? Or you'd be like, hey, you may not be gay, but you're doing stuff with guys, but, I, you know, like, stuff like that happens, bro. But you gotta be careful, because that's a drug, Sam. You wouldn't be doing that if you were sober. Huh? Right? Right? So why are you doing it now? Because you high, son, on some shit you shouldn't be. I wanna thank my mom and dad for all the years of, you know, things I put them through through all my drug use, all of my stealing, my lying, my cheating, my thieving, my jail time, you know, all the, the hardships I put on the family, all the strain, all the awkward elephants in the room, the things that the family members based off of shit I've done to them, you know, just, it's really been a, quite, a, quite a journey, but I thank them for all the time they bailed me out or just came, even if they weren't going to bail me out, they stayed came and bailed me in jail, put money in my canteen, you know. There wasn't an opposition to want to do that for me again because I was just keep going down the same road, but, you know, they was, they was coming to see me and they came on my birthday and when I was up in Ottawa, they, they was down here in Brampton, they sent me to Ottawa, money to Ottawa, just through another ladies' accounts to get brought to the jail for me, you know. That was the kind of mom I got, yo, you know. And uh, they took me back in when I was homeless this time after I was uh, back on the pipe, you know, six months on the 28th, so things are good. And uh, I love your parents, yo. You only got one set of them, bro. And sometimes they're not all we want them to be. But, yo, they're the right ones you should have for some reason, you know. They're the ones God intended you to have, so just stick by them, you know. They'll stick with you, bro. They want what up. Stay